Welcome to day 21 of our Advent devotional series. Today we look at the name Son of Man. Mark chapter 10 verse 45 For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. When we hear the name the Son of Man, I think we think of humanity, of someone who is born to humans. There's even a whole song explaining that in the film Tarzan. And so we might think that this title is simply referring to Jesus' humanity, that he was fully human. I don't think we'd be wrong in saying so. There's references in the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, which use the phrase son of man to highlight the fact that Ezekiel is a human, to distinguish him from the power and majesty of God. However, the name is also used in Daniel chapter 7, where Daniel has a prophetic vision of the Messiah to come. In the vision, he sees one like a son of man who came with the clouds of heaven and was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. He is clearly far more than just a human. This son of man was given glory and divine authority. He is right next to God, the Ancient of Days. So in this verse in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, where Jesus says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He's very subtly pointing to who he really is. Yes, it is a reminder that he is fully human, but he's also speaking knowing that some of the Jews listening would really know their Old Testament. And he knew that they would relate this name to that spoken by Daniel. He knew that they would realise He was actually saying that he had divine authority over all people and nations, that he was the Son of Man. So Son of Man refers to Jesus as a human and as being exalted and glorified. This verse in Mark chapter 10 is showing people that the exalted and glorified King, who belongs on the throne next to God, the Ancient of Days, has come to earth as a human, not to rule, but to serve us. It's meant to make us marvel and stand in awe at the greatness and humility of our King. Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man over 80 times in the Gospels. It seems to be his favourite way to refer to himself. And when using this title to talk about himself, Jesus is bringing these meanings together. He's saying that he is both. He is the one with dominion and power and authority, with glory and sovereign power. But he is also a servant, a human, and he is going to serve us by giving the most precious thing he can, his life. He's being a bit subtle in Mark chapter 10, but he makes it very clear in a few chapters later in Mark chapter 14, verse 62, that he is the promised Messiah. He's on trial before his death, and in response to being asked, are you the Christ? He says, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Here he's directly linking himself to the prophecy in Daniel. He leaves no doubt that he is the Messiah, even though he knows he'll be crucified for it. I think that this is the perfect time to be looking at this name of Jesus, because isn't this exactly what we celebrate and remember at Christmas? That the helpless human baby that was born to a human mother and father in a stable is this very same Son of Man. The Son of Man, who was seated at the right hand of the Father with dominion, power, glory and authority. Well, he grew up as a normal child, a teenager, an adult, He wept, he hurt, he felt every human emotion. And that very divine king gave it all to serve us by giving his life on a cross, knowing that that was the only way to bring us back to the Father and to welcome us into this glorious kingdom forever. So let's take a few moments today and just remember exactly who it is we are worshipping this Christmas. Jesus, the Son of Man.
We hope you enjoyed today's devotional. Tune in tomorrow for more in our Advent series.